All right, everybody, welcome to the Sunday live stream. Sorry, we started a little bit late, had a little bit of problems with the audio. Hopefully it's okay. Let me know in the comment section how things are sounding. So today, pretty good day, actually. Uh, we've had uh, quite a bit of a green run as uh, the crypto market uh, takes off just a little bit. And of course, before we get into that, we have to address the elephant in the room, my green screen. My green screen is working out pretty well today. We'll see how it, uh, how it holds up. But then we'll get to the other elephant in the room, which, of course, an assassination attempt. So as everybody knows, and you've been bombarded, I'm not here to preach to anybody. I'm just going to address it quickly and move on, which is this. Uh, it's a sad day for America. Let's be honest. I mean, when you have a, a, a presidential candidate or a former president actually tried to be assassinated, it is an awful day for the country. And I have to tell you, I'm, you know, for the, the vast, vast, vast majority of people, uh, I have to appreciate them because they're just like me. Whether you be wh whatever party you identify with, uh, I think most normal, sane people uh, would not want to see somebody get uh, assassinated. I don't care if you're if you're a huge Biden supporter or a huge Trump supporter. I'm pretty sure the majority of people on both sides do not want to see somebody get uh, taken off this planet. And then, of course, the uh, uh, suffering uh, for that that their family has to go through. Now. This assassination attempt, uh, somebody actually did uh, perish, a person that was in the audience, and uh, that is a horrible situation for all. So uh, as time moves on, hopefully we can get back to the center and heal and move forward, because right now uh, things are quite hot, and uh, I'm just hoping that the cooler heads prevail. And that's all I want to say about that. So when we move on today, and I, I want to just talk about this at Coinbase. The thing you have to remember is this, uh, the sphere of control. Can you control what's, what's going on in the grand scheme of things? No, you cannot. So just remember that we control the things that we can control and let the other stuff fall to the wayside. So what can we control? Well, we can control investments. We can control the things that we do. We control the, the things that we think about. And of course, we can control saving a little bit of uh, funds when we're actually transacting in crypto and talking about the market. So I did a, a quick post over on uh, Twitter, now called X, and I talked about as the bull market comes, there's things that you want to really think about. First of those is that you want to actually set an increase in limits to what you can actually buy and sell in a 24-hour time period. But the other thing you want to consider and this is just for, for Coinbase participants. I know a lot of you uh, don't use Coinbase. Uh, if you're a United States citizen, that you're pretty much kind of stuck with it unless you, you know, want to get out there with Kraken and also uh, crypto.com, you know, find choices. But for those that actually use uh, Coinbase, I did a, a quick thread just on how much that the fees are going to crush you and what to do, which is essentially to uh, go through the app and depending on what you look at, and just use uh, Coinbase Pro, and I show you how to pay uh, essentially little to no uh, fees, as opposed to you know getting racked up like 148 bucks in fees and crazy stuff like that. So there's a link in the description. You can check out that link and go from there. But today is a good day, right? We've got a green day. Everything's very happy. Then there was an article. I know people get sick of this, but I, I think it's something to note which is China is likely to unban Bitcoin in Q4. And just stick with me. I know your eyes are rolling in the back of your head, thinking to yourself, who cares because they keep banning and unbanning it. I think there's a bigger story here. I think the bigger story behind that is, uh, you know, just how much money is sloshing around in different markets, China being one of them. Now, I don't, I have a hard time figuring out what they're doing in China. Quite honestly, it's not going to affect, you know, a massive amount, but there is something to be said as far as that economy and that market. This was an article from January 25th, 2024, and talks about how crypto trading and mining has been banned in China since 2021, which is, this is mainland China, not Hong Kong, big difference. Uh, but when you have it banned in China, it seems like for the country that it is, they seem to not care because they're still mining Bitcoin and they're still actually trading it. And this is what it states. While crypto is banned in mainland China there and there are strict controls on capital movement across the border, people are still able to trade tokens such as Bitcoin, OKX and Binance or for the OTC channels. 
Mainland investors can also open overseas bank accounts after Hong Kong's open endorsement of digital assets last year. Remember, Hong Kong is not mainland China. There is uh, one, uh, what is it? Uh, one system, two parties, two countries, two systems, one country, excuse me. Chinese citizens are also using their 50,000 annual Forex purchase quotas to move money into crypto accounts. And this was the interesting part to me. China's economic downturn has made investments on the mainland risky, uncertain, and disappointing. So people are looking to allocate assets offshore. I think there's no harder asset than Bitcoin and a couple of altcoins that are out there. So I didn't want to go too deep into what is going on in China because for every you know, one article that you find that uh, China's collapsing. There's another article that says China's doing great. So I don't really care about that part. I don't know exactly what it is. If you're from China, please uh, chime in if you're somehow able to use a VPN and get around the uh, uh, the great firewall of China. Uh, you know, tell me what's going on in the economy. What I really care about is what's happening in their market, the amount of flows and what that means in the world. So. This is the uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange. That's essentially the stock exchange in China and what's going on. And we can see that over, this is a, this is a composite index, almost like an S&P 500. I guess those would be like uh, uh, relevant over there. But we can see over five days, it's doing pretty good actually. Now three months, six months, one year, it's actually been on the, on the decline, which, in, which is in stark contrast to our NASDAQ and S&P 500 which has hit all time highs and keeps going higher regardless of what the economy may or may not be doing. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, all right, I mean, they're doing okay, this is fine. But the question I have is how much money is sloshing around? Because I wanna know how much money is gonna find its way into Bitcoin. And if we take a look, I'm pretty sure I linked this in the, in the description, but it doesn't really matter. If we take a look at the China Stock Exchange versus the US Stock Exchange, did you know the US Stock Exchange, the market cap for the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ? 25 trillion, NASDAQ is 23 trillion. Market cap for the China Stock Exchange, 4 trillion, 6 trillion, 4 trillion, and then HKG, 3 trillion. So it's not, it's a sizable portion, but this is why people are so focused on America. because there's a lot of money sloshing around. That's what it is. So if we think to ourselves, okay, well, if China unbans this and they, they go all crazy, fine, whatever. Well, how does this mean for like the allocation that are finding their way into Bitcoin inevitably? And I got to tell you, I think this is the right place at the right time. We're in 2024, we're going into a presidential election. The uncertainty is going to start to uh, unravel as the presidential nominee or the incumbent uh, makes its way through. I personally don't, I don't, I'm not going to get into it. I don't see the incumbent winning this one, but whatever. So, but as time goes on, the markets don't like uncertainty. And when we get the president in, whether that be Trump, and they're like, okay, we know where we're going with this one, or with Biden, okay, we know where we're going with this one, the markets will, I think, stabilize and actually start to take a huge run on top of the fact that we just saw the CPI report come out. And I think we went from 3.13% to for annual inflation, which is uh, lower than expected. And that is very positive. Maybe we have rate cuts in August. And if that starts to happen, then we have the money printer get turned on. And what is that and how timing is great, right? Going into the end of the year, into 2025, when if we take a look at the four-year cycles, this is where we have these parabolic bull runs. So the question then is, well, how much money is out there? I know I use this, this uh, graphic a lot, but it's something to me to note. This is the money markets. This is all the money that's sloshing around. This is 2022. So believe me, it has actually changed, especially as we start to print money. But well, we can just see that as far as like military spending, uh, 2.1 trillion. And the world's gold, again, almost 12 trillion, 11 and a half trillion dollars. Imagine if 10% just found, found its way into, into Bitcoin. S&P 500, again, 36 trillion, like we just talked about. Debt, US return GDP, 17 trillion. Total uh, global money supply, you're looking at 50 trillion, 82 in broad. Global stock markets, this is global, all of them. New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, Shanghai Stock Exchange or SSE, almost 100 trillion. Global debt, 300 trillion. Global real estate, 326 trillion. Household wealth, I mean, you get where I'm going. There's a lot of money slashing around and we're sitting at what? Barely over $2 trillion. And you don't think you're in the right place at the right time? I gotta tell you, I think you did a great job just by sticking around 
and buying in the bear market. I know it's kind of, uh, you're uncertain maybe right now, but just stick with me. I think you're gonna like where we're going. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And then um, there is this piece, which I have to be honest with you. I, I know people don't like to talk politics, I get it, but politics and crypto and money will always be inter intertwined. There's no way around it. This is just how it's gonna be. And uh, we can either get there really quicker or we can slow down. And if you even take a look at the advent of the internet back in the 80s, early 90s, it was because of Law 230, which was passed uh, by government to the United States that allowed the internet to flourish, which allowed that people could say whatever they want on the internet. And the uh, actual internet or blog post, or excuse me, internet, blog post and website owners wouldn't get sued for what was said. This Law 230 that came into effect pushed the internet to actually become what it actually is today. Could it have done that without it? Sure, it just takes a heck of a lot longer. So why wouldn't we want the government, and the politics to move us into that area? Internet was inevitable. Bitcoin and crypto was inevitable. I just would like to get there a little bit quicker. That's all I'm saying. And because of that, I'm kind of disappointed with this story. Now, I've been traveling the last couple of days, so I want to cover this, but uh, uh, Nick over at uh, Coin Bureau did a great job of this one, but just want to put it out there that the House, House of Representatives, here we have, you know, we have a House of Representatives and we, and then of course it goes to the Senate and there is uh, two senators per state. And then of course it goes to the president's desk. Now, unfortunately, uh, Biden uh, vetoed this uh, SEC crypto rule, I believe it's called, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the SEC Staff Accounting Bulletin, or SAB number 121. And what that's really allowed to, to happen is to allow banks to custody crypto. And I, I know some people are saying, well, why would banks custody crypto? I would never allow it to happen. The thing is, is that there's different strokes for different folks. Some people actually still believe in their banks. Actually, I still like my bank. I still have USAA. It's a great bank. I've had it since I was in the, in the military when I, was a, when I was a buck private. It was great. Uh, but for you know people to to have banks custody of their crypto, I wouldn't do it. But there's a lot of people out there that would. So when I saw this actually get passed by the House, they said, "Okay, let's do this. Let's let's repeal it so the banks can actually custody crypto." Then I went to the Senate. I'm like, "There's no way it's going to happen through there," and I was wrong <laughs> again. And it passed the Senate. Then I went to uh, President Biden's desk and he vetoed. He's like, "Nope, not a chance. Not going to happen." And it went back to the House and it got crushed again. So here's what happened. In a July 11th vote, 228 House members voted to override President Biden's veto of Resolution 109, overturning the, the SAB 121, 60 votes short of the two-thirds majority required. Because once it gets vetoed, it can be sent back to the House and two-thirds have to say, hey, this is what we want. And then we couldn't get enough votes. So U.S. banks would be limited from serving as crypto custodians for the customers, barring future legislation, so they can't do that now. Then on May 8th, President Biden vetoed it, went back to the House, vote of 228 to 182. And Senate was actually in favor of 60 to 38. So it seems like the House of Representatives, they said yes, Senate said yes, Biden administration said no, came back to the House, and just so you know, Republicans voted 207 to pass it this is from the house representatives democrats hey 21 said yes but unfortunately 183 said no so it's uh, just one of those things i still say yes it would be it is inevitable for bitcoin and crypto to move forward but it would just be nicer if we had somebody on our back to push us or help us move the weight of justice and we could actually move forward instead of hindering us with the chains. And I'll mention something about that in the comments section. I'm not gonna go too deep, just I, I think it's very disappointing. And then lastly, before we get into a little q and A, I I just wanna say that uh, we've been doing some polls over on X and uh, what I wanna do was just take, just ask the question, which crypto will appreciate the most in this bull run? And the first one I asked was in the, uh, in the top 10. I said, which ones will do, do the best out of Ethereum, Solana and Time? And Solana crushed with almost 2,000 votes, crushed Ethereum, crushed the open network a ton. My favorite, but whatever, that's fine. I own all three of them, so not a big deal. 
And I just did round two and round three, and now we're on to round four. And so far in round two, I asked the question, you know, who will win between Cardano, Solana, and Chainlink? Cardano won with like 8,000 votes. And then in round three, Cardano crushed Near, Caspa, and ICP by 60%. And now we're on to uh, round four. And so far, hey, look at that. Cardano is still winning. <laughs> 43%. We only had 243 votes. So I linked this in the description. You can vote to see like which one will do better. And I just, on X, you can only put put four, four polls out or four, uh, four placeholders for the things that you're asking for. So right now, Cardano is beating everybody. So I know people will say, yeah, it's a ghost chain. It's awful. Well, I mean, the polls, a lot of people still love it. That's what's happening. And then uh, also, just for a little bit of lightness of mood. I have to give a, an applause to whoever this was. This is from Bitcoin Archive. They said, uh, after the Germans, the German government, if you didn't know, just uh, unloaded billions of dollars worth of, worth of Bitcoin, and they just sold and probably, what's gonna be the worst trade of all time, but that'll be for another video. Uh, Bitcoin Ar Archive says, after the Germans sold all their Bitcoin, somebody sent them a dollar eighty-seven, one dollar, almost two about almost two dollars, in Bitcoin and inscribed the message HFSP German government, which is pretty funny. If you don't know what HFSP is, it means have fun staying poor. Great stuff. And then lastly, 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 just something to ponder for everybody. There's this thing called the fourth turning. And it's I believe in the four-year cycles for, for Bitcoin and crypto. I believe in cycles as far as markets. I believe in cycles for the seasons. There's still four seasons as long as, as far as I remember. And the fourth turning is just another time frame of what's going on. And it struck me as odd because I like Simon Dixon, buddy of mine, I like him. I like Lynn Alden, I like what she says. And in a post, they both said the same thing. Just taking a look at the fourth turning. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it and do all your research. But to make this really easy, I put together this graph a long time ago. And I, some people say, eh, it's just fear mongering or whatever else. I'm like, I'm just telling you, it's, it's, it's been, uh, it's pretty accurate so far. And if we take, there are 80 year cycle blocks, four years, 20 years, four times 20, 80, right? And you go for, through a high awakening, unraveling and a crisis. This started all the way back in 1783, end of the revolutionary war, that's the high. You get an awakening where things look pretty good. You have an unraveling where things just pretty much are starting to fall apart and then you get a crisis. Then you go through it again. And then from 1864 to 1944, same thing, end of the US civil war. And of course the crisis was the start of World War II. 1945, coincidentally, ends in 2025. 1945, the high was we won the world war. It was great, great times. I mean, I wasn't around, but close enough. And then we had an awakening. Everything was going good, 1965, 1984, great times. Then we have an unraveling, 85 to 24. Now we have a crisis. And in every one of these crises, there is some big, huge war that breaks out. So who knows if that's gonna happen? But after this assassination attempt, it does make you wonder. But that's for you to decide. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive. Now, if you want to uh, do a little q and I'll answer all your questions, which there are a boatload I can see, and we'll go for that. If you gotta take off, enjoy your Sunday, go touch grass, get some sun in your face, and that's it.